We've been talking about how the FDA found asbestos in talc baby powder with trial lawyer Mark Lanier. Joining us now via Skype is occupational medicine specialist Dr. Jacqueline Moline. So Dr. Moline, you worked on making these discoveries surrounding talc baby powder and asbestos. We've been sort of asking the question, how dangerous could a small amount of asbestos be for people who've used these products? Well, we don't know the exact amount that people can be exposed to that can cause mesothelioma, but we do know it can occur at very low levels. And what we know is that people have used the talc repeatedly for years and years or at increased risk of developing mesothelioma. And I understand, Dr. Milleen, your expertise actually was originally derived from the World Trade Center, and you did a great deal of research on the effect of asbestos, mesothelioma, and first responders, correct? Well, we've looked at the World Trade Center for the past 18 years. In the first responders, we're worried that it's going to be occurring in the next 20 to 30 years because we know that it takes about 30 to 40 years after someone's been exposed for mesothelioma to occur in first responders. And currently, I'm directing the Northwell World Trade Center program, and we're following folks, and we're very concerned that over time they might develop mesothelioma because we know they had exposure there. And, and just to be clear for our viewers, though, the form of asbestos that's being found in talc is actually the chrysolite asbestos, right? So it's actually very different than the type of asbestos found in construction materials? Well, actually, there are six different types of asbestos that are regulated, and the chrysotile that was found in the Johnson & Johnson powder is actually the same type of asbestos that's found in some construction materials. But there are also different types of asbestos that are found in talc powder, like anthophyllite asbestos, which is a mouthful, but it's not found in construction materials. And that's when we're seeing that in people's tissues, in the folks that use talcum powder, then we say, where did that come from? That did not come from regular construction materials that came from the talc. I think our viewers want to know, how do we reduce our risk? What I recommend is make sure you're using a talc-free product. We can't go back in time and undo what's been done, but we can make sure going forward that we're using safe products. Products that are cornstarch-based, that are talc-free, that are on the market and easily available. And as, as Mark said, check the label and make sure that you're using something that's safe going forward. Well, and you make a great point because, you know, this is baby powder here, and it says pure cornstarch. And so... That's, that's an easy switch to make. Just to back up a little bit, because I realize as we're going through this conversation, we're talking about talc, we're talking about asbestos, and probably a lot of people, what even is asbestos, right? So can you, you're an occupational medicine specialist. When we say asbestos, and you say there are six different types, can you just break that down? When I say, what is asbestos? Asbestos is a naturally occurring mineral. It's mined from the earth and it has been used in a, about 3,000 different applications. What we also know is it's contaminated a lot of products and that is because it's used in talc and there may be talc in various products and industrial talc was used in clay, for example. But we know that the asbestos also contaminated the talc that was used in cosmetic uh, talcum powders. And I think what I've learned is, is when you say used, really what you mean, it, it's just... It's found in it because it's in the earth.